Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about four different types of superchargers. Roots, twin screw, centrifugal, and electric superchargers. No, not that kind. Now first off, a big thank you to eBay Motors for sponsoring this video. We'll get more into that at the end of the video, but know that there is a link in the video description to download the eBay Motors app. Now all superchargers are used as a method of packing more air into the engine so that you can make more power. So to start off, let's look at roots and twin screw style superchargers as the overall layout of them is fairly similar. So you'll have your air come in through the intake, pass through the throttle body, travel through the supercharger which is driven off a belt from the engine. So that's what's going to be rotating this compressor. And then that air is sent through an intercooler, in this case an air to water intercooler. So you've got a radiator up front that's circulating coolant to this intercooler, the air is passing through, travels into the engine, and then out the exhaust. So the overall layout of these two styles of supercharger is basically the same, however the mechanics of what's going on inside is quite different. And so starting off with the root style supercharger, you have two rotors inside. These are of course being driven by the crankshaft through a belt, which then rotates a gearing mechanism which will rotate both of these rotors. Now at the entrance of this root supercharger, the rotors are rotating away from each other. So you have that air come in, it then gets sealed against the body of that housing inside the supercharger and then it's passed down below it and then as you can see these rotors mesh together so they prevent any air from coming back up to the intake. With a twin screw style you have two different rotors here and so one meshes within the other and it compresses that air along that rotor to the back of it. So the air comes in, it gets compressed down through that rotor and then forced out the back and then that compressed air exits below and so this is not compressing air inside of it versus this is compressing air within the supercharger itself. Now I have an egg and part of a toilet paper roll to help explain this further. So with the root style supercharger basically you just have a pocket that you allow air to fill and then you transfer that pocket of air down below the supercharger and then the lobe from the other rotor meshes with it so no air can escape back up past these rotors, then you take in some more air and once again you deposit it below. With the twin screw supercharger, what you're doing is closing off that air towards the back of the rotor. So basically it's compressing that air within the rotor and then it deposits it below. So it takes in air from above, compresses that air, drops it below. It takes in air from above, compresses that air, drops it below. So while the screw type supercharger compresses the air within the supercharger, the root style supercharger is simply providing more air below it than the engine can take in. So that manifold builds up pressure within it. So now let's look at a couple of actual examples. First up is a root supercharger made by Eaton used in the new Shelby GT500. You'll notice that it has a four lobe design instead of three and a high twist with 160 degree lobes. Air comes in through the throttle, travels over to the rotors, is then discharged above the rotors, passes through an intercooler, and then over and down to the individual intake runners. At low loads, when you don't need boost, the air can skip the rotors by traveling through a bypass valve so that the supercharger has minimal impact on fuel economy, for example, while cruising on the highway. And here's a look inside a twin screw style supercharger used on the Dodge Hellcat engines made by IHI. Air comes in through the throttle, is compressed by the rotors, travels up into a chamber, and then down through an intercooler before traveling down the intake runners to the individual cylinders. This example also has a bypass valve for low load operation. Both of the supercharger examples shown also have the rotors mounted upside down so that the rotors themselves are lower, reducing the engine's center of gravity. Another example of a more old school style of root superchargers are the massive ones used in top fuel drag racing. Three lobes, a small amount of twist, and these actually have apex seals to operate more efficiently. Of course, since the seals touch the rotors, the service life is much shorter, but in racing that's much less of an issue. Now both roots and twin screw superchargers are described as positive displacement superchargers, and what that means is a fixed amount of air goes through with each revolution. And so what this is great for is that it means your torque curve is pretty wide. It's effective, you get effective boost across a wide range of engine RPM. So if you were to look at torque versus RPM and before it was this ideal flat line, Basically all you're doing is just bumping up that torque curve and you get a benefit in boost not only on the low end but also mid and top end. So some of the advantages and disadvantages of each 
Both of these offering you that wide torque curve, which is great. The twin screws do tend to be a bit more efficient. However, you know, there's been a lot of modern advances with root style superchargers, like those four lobe designs, the 160 degree twist, uh, bypass valves and so they're actually advancing and they're able to get thermal efficiencies above 70% with these root style superchargers. Uh, downside really to both of them being packaging the location of where they must go um, and the overall size of them they're pretty large pretty hefty uh, and then for these twin screw style superchargers if there's not a bypass valve well then it's always going to be compressing air. Any air that travels through this twin screw supercharger is going to be compressed. And so no matter what, as you compress air, it heats up. So if you don't have a bypass and you do push air through it, you are gonna be raising the temperatures. Some examples of some cars that these are used on, root style superchargers you can find, of course, on the GT500 that we were showing, on the Corvette ZR1, Lotus Avora S, and this is a root style supercharger that will be going on my MX-5. Now for for the twin screw superchargers, of course, this is going on all of the Dodge Hellcats. Uh, it was also used on the previous generation Ford GT. Moving on to centrifugal and electric style superchargers, these are a lot like turbochargers, except instead of having the exhaust gases drive the compressor, now you either have an electric motor doing it or it is driven off of an engine belt. And so here we're looking at the overall diagram, but again, that basic concept of simply using an impeller, which is either driven by the engine or driven by an electric motor spinning up that impeller, pulling in the air, throwing that air to the sides of this housing, and then eventually it exits through and heads over to the engine. So the air comes in through the intake, travels through that compressor, through an intercooler, it could be air to water or air to air, uh, sent up front through the throttle body into the engine and then out the exhaust. So we're kind of looking at both scenarios here and you would have one or the other. In purple, we have that purely mechanical system being driven off of the engine belt. Uh, you wouldn't have that engine belt going all the way to the supercharger in the electric version. You would simply use the engine belt to power an alternator. That alternator would power a battery. The battery would then send energy to a motor which spools up your pump and then you get higher pressure boost within the engine. Now, as a visual example, a centrifugal supercharger is what I installed on my Honda S2000. And the setup is pretty simple. You have a crank belt rotate the impeller, which pulls in the air, it passes through an air to water intercooler, and then into the intake manifold. Now, unlike the roots and twin screw style superchargers, these are not positive displacement pumps which means they need to spool up really fast, they need to spin very fast in order to actually provide useful boost. And so with your centrifugal style supercharger, if you look at the torque versus RPM curve, what happens is at low RPM, you're really not building any boost. It has to wait until the engine is all the way wound up, and so then this will be spinning much faster. Now you can use gearing to help out here so that the impeller rotates much faster than your engine RPM, but even still, you're only gonna reach your peak boost at peak RPM. So it really shifts your torque curve to the top end instead of benefiting the bottom end like you get with a positive displacement pump. Now, if you're using an electric supercharger of this same style, well, it doesn't matter where your engine RPM is. It simply matters how much energy do you have in your battery. So if you've got plenty of energy in your battery, you can spool up that motor whenever you want and thus produce boost wherever you want. So as long as you have power, as long as you have energy stored in that battery, you can make your torque curve look like whatever you want uh, as long as the motor and the battery have the power to do it. So you can get great bottom end, you can get immediate response, and you can make it look like whatever you want. So some of the pros and cons here, centrifugal style tends to be an efficient style of supercharger. It does allow for really high boost. However, of course, that's all at the top end. Uh, packaging flexibility is great. It's a small system. Um, you know, in my S2000, there was plenty of space for it and you have flexibility in where it goes. Also allows for flexibility in using an intercooler up front or if you wanna use an air to water intercooler. Of course, the downside being that torque curve. And also some of these do use engine oil. And so you'll have a return from that supercharger to the oil pan versus some of the other methods, the roots and twin screw. They will often have their own contained oil systems that don't need to be changed out all that regularly. As far as the electric style supercharger, of course, the big advantage being the flexibility with that torque curve. Another advantage being efficiency. And that kind of depends. Is it efficient to use an engine to power an alternator, to charge a battery, to send that energy to a motor and then spool up that compressor? No, not necessarily. However, there are scenarios where you can charge this battery basically for free. Let's say you're at a high speed 
and you're coming down to a stop. Well, you can use that scenario. The engine's gonna be spinning no matter what, even if it's not injecting fuel. So you can use that engine to power the alternator to charge up that battery while you're coming to a stop. Basically for free, you're charging up this battery and then you can use that energy to power the motor. So in stop and go scenarios, you can actually charge these things uh, very efficiently and get back some energy that you otherwise would have simply lost either way. Now some disadvantages of course being the cost and complexity of adding this system on. You're going to need a 48 volt system so that you can get the kind of power you need to actually build useful boost pressures and there's of course a weight associated with adding all of this complexity as well and the batteries alternator, the beefier alternator uh, and the motor associated with it. Now some examples of cars that use these you can find centrifugal superchargers actually there's two of them uh, that go on the Koenigsegg CCX, uh, an electric supercharger being used on the Audi SQ7. And again, a huge thank you to eBay Motors for sponsoring the video. You can download their app using the link in the video description, and they've recently added some new features to the app so that you can natively bid and also chat with the seller right through the app. Another great feature of eBay Motors is that they have a vehicle protection plan, which covers up to $100,000 for vehicle non-delivery, missing title, or significant undisclosed defects, so you can be confident in getting what you pay for. Happy bidding, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.